All right, this is the last in my initial list of integration by parts problems, and this one's pretty classic. Every calculus or calculus two student has to do a problem like this at some point during the semester. First, let me point out that this five and this two could be any numbers, but this problem is gonna work out pretty similarly, uh, no matter what those numbers are. So as always, we look at this integral, we see a product of two functions, and that indicates that we should probably be using integration by parts. So from that integrand, we need to choose a u and a dv. Now between e to the five x and sine of two x, neither function is gonna simplify if we differentiate it, and neither function is gonna simplify if we integrate it. So it actually doesn't matter what we choose for our u and our dv, I will choose u is e to the 5x and dv is sine of 2x dx. The chain rule gives us du is 5 e to the 5x and a pretty simple u substitution would give us negative 1 half cosine of 2x is our v. Now let's rewrite this integral and using our integration by parts formula we get u times v minus the integral of v du. Just a little bit of simplification gives us this integral here. Now usually what I say is that integration by parts has succeeded if if the integral that we're left with is simpler than the integral that we started with. And I think you can see pretty clearly that that is not the case here. This integral looks shockingly similar to the integral that we started with. But if we go through an integration by parts step one more time, some magic is going to happen. Using u is e to the 5x again, and using dv is cosine of 2x dx, we get these results. And now let's rewrite this problem again. Now we just copied our original integral down in our first term from the first integration by parts. Now this integral that remains, I'm going to use the integration by parts formula to rewrite. u times v is going to give us subtracting the integral of v du, and let's simplify that last integral just a little bit. Now let's rewrite this whole line. This time I'm going to distribute the five halves here through these parentheses. Now again, what I usually say is that integration by parts has succeeded if the integral that remains is simpler than the integral that we started with. But you'll notice that in this case, these two integrals are exactly the same. In fact, we can think of them as like terms, meaning that we can add this term to both sides of this equation. That gives us the following line. Now you'll notice that on the left side of this equation, like I said before, you have two like terms. You have one times the original integral plus 25 fourths times the original integral. Adding together one times something plus 25 fourths times something is going to give us 29 fourths times that thing. So what we're left with is that 29 fourths times this original integral is all of this mess that we got over here on the right hand side of the equation. Now the whole goal of this problem in the first place was to find this integral right here. We're now in a position where we can get that integral by itself simply by dividing both sides of this equation by 29 fourths. That is the same thing as multiplying both sides of the equation by 4 29ths. If we do that, we get the integral we were looking for by itself on the left hand side. Multiplying that 4 29ths through the parentheses and simplifying some fractions gives us finally this result right here, which we can just tack a plus C onto the end of. We can box it up and we can zoom out on this thing so we get a little bit of perspective on all of the work that we just did. Okay, I hope that that helped you out. The next set of videos I'm going to do about trigonometric substitutions, so I hope to see you there.